thank you. Lord. Wow. We bless you right now. We bless you. Wow. Yes, we thank you for a remarkable year. We thank you for a wonderful year. We thank you, Lord, that you've, you've been so good to us. You've blessed us. You, that your hand has been upon us. That everything we put our hands to is prospered this year. Yes. You're wonderful, wonderful. Yes. Wonderful year. Lord, we thank bless you. Jesus. And we praise you. Oh, we got a lot of exciting things coming up before the end of it, too. Uh, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We just bless you, Lord God. We bless you, Lord God. On the 17th, uh, Pastor Gail is going to be ministering at uh, a church in Miami. And uh, with uh, some of our people that we're connected with in Miami, she'll be ministering there on a Sunday morning. And uh, so uh, tune in. It'll be really, really good. I know it'll be uh, excellent. We, I, I'm just not sure whether we're going to be able to get it on Facebook or how we're going to do it exactly. But uh, I know that they broadcast on Facebook too, so we'll see if there's something we can link that anyway. But we'll uh, anyway, we're excited. Stand in. Huh? Go ahead. Yeah, no, it'll be awesome. This is going to be absolutely awesome. And uh, we're, we're very, very excited about that. And then we're going to have our camp meeting. And uh, do you have the dates on that camp meeting now? We're, uh, we're going to get the, give you the dates. The 7th, 8th, or the 9th? The 7th, 8th, the 9th. That's a Saturday the 7th, Sunday the 8th, and Monday the 9th. It'll just be Monday morning, the, the 9th there. But uh, we encourage you that we'll have be 10 o'clock and 7 on Saturday, and then 10 o'clock and 7 on Sunday, and uh, then 10 on, on uh, Monday. So we just encourage you to uh, come. It's the beginning of the year. We're going to call it our First Fruits Camp meeting this year. It's a uh, it's not going to be a winter camp meeting because we don't really have winter here. It's <laughs> so it's our first group camp meeting from the beginning of the year. We just encourage you to join us. Amen. And if you don't live here and you can't join us uh, in person, then uh, feel free to join us online. All, all those services will be online. But it's so much better to be in the presence of the Lord, to be in the presence of other believers and to sense the, the anointing that, uh, that comes just from being in the presence of uh, God. And God receives it as a seed. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's a different seed sown between making the effort to get somewhere and watching it on the internet. Those are two entirely different things. And it's better to watch it on the internet than, than watch TV or something like that. But um, better to be in person and to make the effort because it represents a, a, a seed. You know, there's a, in the book of Haggai, uh, you know, the, the prophet was asking, is, is there any seed yet in the barn? You know, mm -hmm. for as yet the olive tree and the pomegranate and uh, whatever the other fruit right. is that they're talking about, they have not brought forth. Mm -hmm. But from this day on, I'll bless you, meaning that the implication was that from this day on, if you'll begin to sow, if you'll make sure that the seed, well, he's not talking about physical, tangible seed necessarily. He Perhaps he is, but he's certainly talking about seed of the pursuit of God, seed right. of, of of pursuing the things of God, of spending time in prayer, spending time in the presence of God. Those are seeds. Those are sometimes those are the most important seeds you can sow because that's what God wants. God doesn't really want your money. God doesn't have a use for your money. He, he really wants you. He wants your presence. He wants your attention. He wants to be able to spend time with you. And to the extent that you can sow that, you're sowing what God really wants. And uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's an awesome thing. And we, you know, sometimes we, we overlook that, but the truth is that's what God wants more than anything else is he wants you. And he wants your presence and he wants your thoughts and he wants your, your attention. And so I just encourage you, you know, we, we've always begun the year, even before we started the church, we would go to a camp meeting at the church where we where we uh, attended. And we would always try to begin the first of, of, of each new year in the, uh, in, in the camp. One of the things that uh, uh, we've done in the past is made sure that the first check that we wrote on our bank accounts for uh, were, were seeds in the kingdom of God. And uh, starting January 1, again, the first check that we would write in January, we'd make sure that was a seed that was sown somewhere into the kingdom of God. The idea being, you want to assert you what, what you want. The whole principle, and we talked about this last Wednesday night, So, and it is archived if you want to go back and look at it, um, the whole, principle, the whole objective of the principle of first fruits is that you give God the first portion, you give God the honored portion,
portion, it enables God to be able to touch the rest of it. So that was the idea in ancient Israel where they were instructed to bring in the first of the sheaves and the first of the harvest. They were supposed to bring it in and present it before the Lord as a wave offering, not because the Lord was going to eat it or not because anybody was going to consume it. It was a good thing. But they wanted to associate it with him. They wanted to give him thanksgiving for the fact that there was a harvest and to associate him by bringing him the first portion, by bringing him the honored portion. What happened is it associated with him with the remainder of the harvest and it gave him the, 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 the right to do with the rest of the harvest as he saw fit. And he could bless that harvest. And we have seen that played out in our lives again and again and again where by bringing in the first fruit of a particular situation, we've seen God be able to touch the remainder in miraculous ways. And so I just encourage you, one of the things that I'd like to have happen personally in the, in the year that lies ahead is I'd like God to touch that year and have that year just explode in every way. It explode in the ministry, explode in the business, explode in, in just every way that it could possibly uh, explode. So we want to present him with the first fruits. We want to present him with the honored portion, the first fruits of the year, uh, that he could be able to do that. So I just once again, I, I encourage you with that. Study the principle of first fruits. There's very few things that, that I think Pastor Gail and I have ever done in our uh, spiritual lives. There's very few things where we saw such an immediate return as with first fruits, as with making the first fruits offering. I just encourage you, you know, you, the natural mind says, hey, how can that be? It's a spiritual thing. And once again, it's a connection with God that gives God an opportunity to be able to touch the remainder in such a way that you could, you could never do that. And so I just, once again, we encourage you in that. Um, one of the things I, you know, like to encourage you about in, in First Roots is to, uh, you know, we all, we all have probably made uh, New Year's resolutions, you know, or uh, made, uh, uh, even decided, well, we're going to change the year, you know, the lives ahead, and yet usually last until the afternoon of the first day or something like that. But uh, I encourage you to, to, to prayerfully consider uh, how you want to change your day. See, the, the, the day, you know, the, 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 there's, a, there's cycles in the earth. You know, you have the day that goes to the week, that goes to the month, that goes to the year. And there's cycles. And, uh, and God intended that it would be that way. And he gave men the gift of sleep and the gift of rest to be able to start a new day. You know, every day, at the end of every day, you know, that day's gone, there's a new day, and you have the opportunity yes. to start. So it was in God's heart all along to, to have a new beginning every day. That there's a new beginning every day, there's a new beginning every week, there's a new beginning every month. That was in the heart and mind of God. And what we want to do is we want to capture the flow. That's one of the things that, that fasting does, you know. Uh, like we, we typically fast one day a week because it allows you to reset the week. And what happens is you take one day that you set apart unto God and you capture the rhythm of God. The rhythm of God is six days on, one day off. And by doing that, you capture in your body, you capture the rhythm of God. And uh, so you, you want to do it not just in uh, your food, not just in the, the area of eating, but you want to do it in the area of prayer. You want to do it in the area of time that you spend in the presence of God. And so I encourage you to, to prayerfully examine yourself, prayerfully examine your habits, prayerfully examine the things that you do as we move towards a new year here. How, how do you want to go forward? What do you want your days to look like as you go forward? You know, I, I have certainly found that, you know, I can, you know, I can sit down at my desk in the morning and I can hit, hit, hit the crack of dawn in the morning and I can look up at night when it's time to go to bed and have spent the entire day, you know, yes. just, just, uh, and, and what's incredible is for the most part, I spent the entire day with people I didn't like. I spent, I, I spent I, in some cases, I spent the entire day with people I couldn't even stand to be around, you know, because that's the nature of the business, you know. If we only did business with people that we really liked, we wouldn't do much business. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So, so uh, what do you want to do? Again, I, again, I encourage you, this, this is a big deal, is to examine yourself, examine your day. Examine your weeks, examine your behaviors, 
and the way that you spend your time and carve out the first fruits portion for God. Because what you want more than anything is you want him to touch the rest of it. And I can show you, you know, the Bible says that length of days and long life is in his hand. What, is that Psalm uh, 1, 2, or 3? Something like that. Let me see. Let me just, let me turn there. You know, the first few Psalms really represent just a, Blessed is the man that walks not in the council of the ungodly. That's, that's Psalm yeah. 1. What? Oh, there you go. Yeah. Yeah, blessed is the man that walks not in the council of the ungodly, right. nor stands in the way of the sinner, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law that he meditate day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by rivers of living water that bring forth fruit in season. His leaf shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Now the rest of that, that's not all of it. The rest of it talks about the ungodly. You know, the, what, what God does with the ungodly is between him and the ungodly. And uh, certainly not as between me. Uh, and and you know, it's just not, it's just not my, uh, it's just not, it's not for me to say. That's something that God does with the ungodly. I don't really it's, worry about that. Because I just, it's what, Proverbs what? Three. Proverbs 3. Proverbs 3. And, um, uh, Proverbs 3, Proverbs 3 and 13. Starting with 13. Starting with 13. Happy is the man that finds wisdom and the man that getteth understanding. For the merchandise of it is better than the merchandise of silver and the gain thereof and fine gold. She is more precious than rubies, and all the things thou canst desire are not to be compared to her. Length of days is in her right hand, and in her left hand riches and honor. Her ways are ways of pleasantness in all her paths of peace. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank Amen. you, Jesus. Length of days is in her right hand. That's great. Right. Length of days is in her right hand. So you can Amen. elongate your day. You can Amen. stretch your day by, by meeting the right hand of God, by meeting God in the morning, meeting yes. God, meeting in the presence of God. You can get more out of the day. You can Amen. stretch the day. You can get longer. The length of days is in the hand of wisdom. Amen. And you know, the, here's the thing about wisdom. Wisdom is a principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And with all thy getting, get understanding. Amen. And the, 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 the way that you get wisdom is you ask. Right? Yes. The Bible says, do any of you lack wisdom? Let him ask of God, who gives to all men liberally and is praised of God. Amen. So, the remedy for wisdom is seeking all who seek me find me. All who, that's that's in uh, is that Proverbs four? That's Proverbs four. Okay. Get wisdom, get understanding. This is a Proverbs four verse five. Get wisdom, get understanding, forget it not. Neither decline from the words of my mouth. Forsake her not, and she shall preserve thee. Love her, and she shall keep thee. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom, and with all thy getting, get understanding. Exalt her, and she shall promote. Thee. She shall bring thee to honor when thou dost embrace her. She shall give to thine head an ornament of grace and a crown of glory. Shall she deliver to thee? Hear, O my son, and receive my sayings, and the years of thy life shall be many. Amen. I have taught thee the way of wisdom. I have led thee in my path. So Amen. wisdom is in the presence of God. Um, so again, I, I, I would just encourage you. Um, one of the things that you want to spend a little bit of time doing here over the, you know, as we prepare for the new year, as we get ready for the new season, I mean, we'd all like to see a more prosperous year than we had before. We'd all like to see a year that's better than it was before. And the way you do that is if you can get God to touch your ear. Yes. That's what, because there's no other way to do it. It's not, you know, even if, if you work hard and you prosper a little bit more than you did the year before, but God wasn't in it, and God didn't prosper you, then it isn't going to be such a hot year. So, uh, so that's what you want. Mm -hmm. And uh, let me, uh, uh, let's look at, uh, and this is one of my favorite passages of scriptures, 1 Samuel 30. And I want you to see something here. It's a powerful, powerful picture. 1 Samuel 30. And it came to pass, when David and his men were come to Ziklag on the third day, 
that the Amalekites had invaded the south in Ziklag, and they had smitten Ziklag, and they burned it with fire, and had taken the women captives that were therein. And they slew not any, neither great nor small, but they carried them away and they went on their way. So David and his men came to the city, and behold, it was brought with fire. And the wives and their sons and their daughters were taken captive. Then David and the people that were with him lifted up their voice and wept and wept until they had no more power to weep. And David's two wives were taken captive. And David was greatly distressed, for the people spoke of stoning him. Because the soul of all the people was grieved, every man for his sons and his daughters. But David encouraged himself in the Lord. David encouraged himself in the Lord. Now it doesn't really say, how did he do that? Maybe it was worship. Maybe it was prayer. Maybe it was meditation on the scripture. Maybe it was praying in tongues. I don't, we, we, there's, there's no... Uh, indication here. All it says is David encouraged himself in the Lord. Now you can't encourage yourself in the Lord and not be in the presence of the Lord. So whatever it was that he did, he ended up getting up into the presence of the Lord. And then David said to Abathar the priest, Ahimelech's son, I pray thee, bring me hither the ephod. And Abathar brought thither the ephod to David. And David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue after this troop? Shall I overtake? And he answered him, Pursue, for thou shalt surely overtake, and without fail recover all. Now, what I want you to see in that is here's David. He's confronted with an extremely difficult situation. He's in, you know, clearly the people are down. It says they wept. They wept so loudly. They wept so long. They wept until they had no more power to reap. So here's, here's David and all of the men. They're incredibly discouraged circumstances, only David appears to have encouraged himself in the Lord. Here's what I would submit to you, is that in the middle of distressing circumstances, David knew what he needed to get yes. out of it. That's a, such a key thing, because what happens is you can get in a, a, a you can get feeling downtrodden, you can get feeling low, what was it, Eeyore used to say, Eeyore, the, the, feeling really low. <laughs> So, you know, you can get into a downward spiral is what happens. And you go lower and you go lower and you go, and you got to know what will get you out of it. And that's what David did here. You see, David knew that there was a certain way he could encourage himself in the Lord and he could get out of that spiral. And it appears that he alone was the only one who, who did that, only one who knew that. That certainly is a mark of a leader. You know, David... David was certainly God's chosen man of the moment. He's chosen God's chosen man for the hour. And he, he, he clearly it, uh, uh, has established himself as an extraordinary leader. And one of the things he's learned is what does he need to change the circumstances? And he realizes it's encouraging himself in the Lord. I met this guy, I knew this guy uh, years ago, and uh, he was telling me that... Uh, I don't remember exactly how the subject came up, but we were talking about our day, you know, how the, the day went, you know, and that we, you know, both would spend time in the prayer and, and uh, uh, in the presence of God in the morning. And he said, but you know, he said, what I found, he said, is it wears off so quickly? He said, so what I found is, he said, I need to spend some time in prayer at lunchtime. Yeah. And he said, I need to spend some time in prayer in the afternoon. So he said, I actually do it three different times a day. And he said, if I'm really busy and i got to short up a little bit of time, I'll make that morning a little less. And maybe each one a little bit less, but I still do the three times a day. Amen. He knew what he needed to Amen. get out of the spiral. Amen. See? Because Amen. we all have that. We all can get, yes. I mean, no matter how you train yourself, no matter what, what things happen, have happened to you, we are still susceptible to the downward spiral of this depression, the downward spiral of discouragement, the downward despite like one of the things that that, that, that I have found, and, and this is true confessions, time, one of the things that I have found is I get so disgusted with people, you know, who 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 see the world through different eyes. My my days are spent in our business, my days are spent probably 80% of the people I interact with are not born again. Mm -hmm. Um and uh 70% of them 
worship sticks and stones and gods that aren't no gods at all, you know? And what happens is I can become so, uh, you, you, your, your spirit gets dirty mm -hmm. because, you know, unholiness is contagious. Mm -hmm. Holiness is not contagious. Mm -hmm. See, holiness is a decision. Unholiness, you're going to get it. You're going to rub up against the unholy. Right, that's right, all they right, And that's what the Bible right, says. Right, right. Uh, and oh, is oh, it Hank oh. that where it says that? That um, un holiness is contagious. Yes. Uh -huh. uh, holiness is un uh, holiness is not contagious. But right. unholiness yes. is contagious. Yeah. And that's what I find is that, once again, that's it's just the nature of my business. It's the nature of what I do that I spend, you know, substantially the majority of my day interacting with people who uh, are just, they're, they're certainly not born again. Mm -hmm. And they're about as unsanctified as unsanctified could get, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, and it just, it's, it becomes disgusting sometimes to actually be around <laughs> those people. I, listen, I'm just, I'm, I'm this, you know, I mean, most pastors would say, oh, you know, it's a joy to be around people. No, it's not. Not if they're not born again. It's not a joy to be around. It's not a joy to be around uh, people who worship you know, the, 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 the rising of the sun or, you know, those kinds of things. That's not a joy at all. And so I, what I've got to know is I've got to know, what do I need? Yes. What do I need to get out of that? You know, how do I encourage myself in the Lord? You know, I, I know I need that morning time, but maybe I need something later on. Maybe yes, I need a yes, break, yes, you, yes, know? Yes. Um, you know? You uh, know, uh, you know, I've, I've listened over the years to a lot of, uh, of, of, of teachers, some good, some not good, uh, particularly on the subject of time management, you know, and how do you manage your day, how do you manage your time. Right. And um, uh, what I've come up with is sometimes you, you just got to take a break, you know, at certain points. And you just got to get up and take a break, no matter how busy you are, because you just got to clear away, you got to separate yourself from the ungodliness that we're around on a, on, yes. a, on a daily basis, you know? And so I just, I encourage you, just like David, you see, David knew what he needed. He knew he had to encourage himself. More. He knew that he had needed a word from God, but that he couldn't get a word from God until he could get up into God's presence. See, you and I, the Bible says, we're seated in heavenly places with him. We're, we're seated, so if you're seated next to Christ in heavenly places, you ought to be able to get the answers you need just by turning and then asking him. But you, we, we, what happens to us is it slips away from us that we're seated in heavenly places and we forget. And we get down from the heavenly places, we come down from the heavenly places, we come down here, you know, and, and we're where Christ is not sitting next to us, you know. Now he's always in our presence and you appreciate what I'm saying. But the idea is, that you need to know what it is that you need in order to get into his presence. Amen. What do you need yes. to be able to hear yes. from him? Yes. How, do you, how can you uh, put yourself here? How, how do you encourage yourself in such a way that you can get your ears, your spirit yes. ears open to be able to hear from him? Because I will tell you this, if you're in a fence, faith doesn't work. Faith doesn't work in offense. And if you, you become offended with the situations and circumstances of the day, all of a sudden you're not going to be able to hear from God. Right. Because faith doesn't work in offense. On the other hand, yes. if you purpose in your heart to stay out of offense or to do the things that are necessary to get you out of offense, what right. will happen is then all of a sudden you, you, you can stay in faith. And yes. you can be in faith. And you fight off offense. You fight yes. off discouragement. You fight off you know, because listen, this you know, we don't live in the land where there's never heard a discouraging right. word. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's not the land we live in. No <laughs> oh, hallelujah. So anyway, what, what I wanted to do was, what, what, what I want you to think about here um, mm -hmm. is, particularly as we come now toward the end of the year, again, if you don't change something, mm -hmm. the new year's going to look just like the old year. The new year will be, and, and maybe you make a little bit more money, you know, or maybe you, you, you know, acquire a few more goods or something like that. But for all practical purposes, if you don't change something, it's going to look just like the year that was behind you. And who wants to do that? You know, you already lived that year before. 
What you want is you want to live a year ahead of you that's going to be good, that's going to be better. You captured what God had for you, what God had laid up for you, and he has things laid up for you. But you've got to be able to hear. The, you know, he, he, here's the thing about how God operates. Whatever it is that you're believing God for, you're going to get through the delivery of a word. That's how God operates. He operates by his word. He delivers his word. Whether it's the spoken word, whether it's the revealed word, whether it's the word of uh, 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 revelation knowledge, mm -hmm. he does it by his word. And it's the hearing and the receiving and the executing the word of God. That's how you get to the next place. Well, it begins yes. with the ability to hear. Yes. And if you're in discouragement or you're in depression yes. or you're, you're, you're angry with people or upset with people, you can't hear from God. That's yes. just the reality of how it is. And if you can't hear from God, you can't get direction. And if you can't get direction, you can't execute on the direction. And you don't end up going where God had for you to go. So once again, I just I, I encourage you, just like David, know what you need. You know, know what you need to get up into his presence. Maybe it's just taking a break and saying, "Listen, I'm going to sing a couple songs." You know, I'm going to sing a couple of my favorite yes, songs. Yes, you know? yes, yes. I remember when I first got born again. The church that I went to, the little church that I went to, they had uh, they, they they had a really good musical uh, group. And they would do, they, they decided in advance what songs they were going to sing. And so they would do a little sheet, you know, the different songs. And that was great because, you know, you, I could take it with me. And, you know, then if you had a discouraging moment or difficult circumstances or you just needed to take a break or something, you had the words of the song right there and you could remember yeah. the tune. And, and it was really, really good for me. And then I discovered the... Um, uh, the the old integrity music tapes, you know, which uh, what what they used to do years ago was they would they would take a particular section of scripture and they develop a whole series of songs out of that scripture and then you played the tape and it was it was the word after the word after the word and it was excellent and that's I listened to those all day long in my car and I had them in my car and that's what I listened to all day long so the idea was I knew what yes. I needed you know? yes I knew that I I, I needed something well. Life never changes in that respect. You you got to know what you need. Yes. And so I encourage you, as we come in, as we move toward the new year, we've been talking about, we talked about first fruits, you know, uh, last week, and we talked a little bit about first fruits again. But I, I just want, I want to encourage you as we begin to go to the new year, that we all begin to get prepared so that we can take advantage of the change of the calendar, the change of the, 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 the season. Now, certainly you can make changes at, at any given point in time, but it's changing anyway. With the, and there's, you know, and, and, and typically what happens is a little bit quieter, and you don't perhaps have quite as much things going on, you know, around the, the uh, holidays, at least work type related things. And you maybe you've got an opportunity to begin to think about, you know, how do I want to make changes for the next year? How do I want to change my day? Do I want to restructure my day? What can I do? Maybe I want to rearrange my, my, my workstation, you know, so that it looks a little bit different, you know. Maybe I want to rearrange the hours that I'm, I'm working or the hours I'm praying or the hours I'm spending or, or, or the days I'm even working or, 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 right. or whatever. The point is examine your day. Examine your behavior. Examine the things that happen so that you can kind of try to get an idea of, well, maybe I want to change this and maybe I want to change it because I want my days to be productive. Long life is in his hand, and length of days and long life is Amen. in his hand. Amen. And of course, Amen. I'm sure that. Amen. Amen. In other words, if length of days is in his hand, you've got to get in his hand too. That's how you get the long, long, long life. That's how you get the Amen. elongated days. That's how you get more done. So once again, I just I, I encourage you to to examine yourself, examine your days, examine your behavior, examine your life. Examine how you spend. Are you, are, you, are you actually getting to church, you know, on, on, on a weekly basis? Or are, you, are you just watching it on the internet? It's better to watch it on the internet than not at all. But it's better to get to church, too, to make sure that you're, that you're just you going out of the way to get into the presence of the Lord. Well, hallelujah, once again, I want to encourage you. The camp meeting, we're going to have our camp meeting this year uh, in the, uh, the first weekend in January. 
and uh, it's going to be a wonderful time. I encourage you to come. It'll be great. And again, between here and there, we'll be talking about perhaps a few other things that might help you just change your behavior, and capture your your uh, capture your thoughts. And you know, the the secret to the supernatural is the control of your mind, because if you can't control your mind, you can't control your tongue. And this and death and life is in the power of the tongue. So what you what you want to do is you want to you, you, you need to learn the control of your mind. Know what your mind needs to separate itself. Know what you need to be able to get separated apart. Know what you need to get into the presence of God. Because that's where the voice is. Know what you need. It is the supernatural is all about the control of the mind. Because when you can control your mind, now you can control your speech and you control your mouth. And the supernatural, I'll tell you this, you will never enter in routinely to the supernatural realm if you can't control your mouth. You've got to get your mouth under control. You, you don't talk about what you don't want. You don't talk about negative circumstances. You don't talk about circumstances that you do not want to grow. You just shut up. Or don't talk at all, or begin to talk about the things you do want to grow. But don't allow yourself to be sucked in and begin to talk about what you don't want to have. Talk about what you don't want to have happen. Don't do that. It, uh, you know, you, because you, 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 you've got to control your thought. Because as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you. Do you have anything to add, Precious? Hallelujah. Well, anyway, so so again, I appreciate that that was a, a, a practical uh, thing we were talking about uh, today. But you know what happened with David is when, when David began to, when, when he was exiled by the king, or he was thrown out by the king, he went down into to, you know, basically what was a cave, the cave of Agile, and uh, people came to join him. There were there were the, the Bible says there were four hundred people who came. Yes. There were people who were broke, they were busted, they were disgusted, they were in trouble, they were in debt. And uh, David took those men as a leader and he shaped their lives. And what happened is out of those four hundred men, thirty-three of them became the mighty men. And it's, it's you know it's a remarkable percentage, really, you know, it's what is it, eight percent? Something like that. Of, 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 of a, a discouraged, broken down, worthless lot became the mighty men whose names are recorded for all history because David shaped them and he taught them how, how, how to think like mighty men and how to begin to, 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 to control their thoughts and to control their speech and they became the mighty men again recorded for all posterity. So you do that too. Hallelujah. Anyway, thank you so much for joining us. God bless you. And uh, you know, the thing, here's the thing about our faith, and here's the thing about our uh, what we believe, this, this word. If you can't make it work for you, if you can't get it to the place where it's producing for you, where it's producing the presence of God, where it's producing the power of God in your life, then it doesn't have any value for you. And you'll end up just not paying attention to it because it doesn't have a value for it. It's got to work for you. But you've got to make it work for you. You have to you have to decide, what do I need to make that work for it work for me? Anyway, thank you so much for joining us tonight. God bless you. And we'll uh, we'll see you